Hi friends, in this lecture what we'll try to do basically is understand the whole concept of stress at a point. Let us see how. For example, I have this body with me and I want to find stress at point Q. I have this force F1 here, this force F2 here and this force F3 here. Right. Now stress at point Q, for defining stress at point Q, we need to understand the plane. The plane is very important. Because stress, as we know, is force per unit area. And an infinite number of areas can pass through Q. So stress at a point is basically some kind of a very ambiguous statement unless we know the area, which area we are referring to. And basically, we can... So let us suppose that we have three axes. X, Y, and Z. Now let us suppose that we cut a plane which is perpendicular to the X axis. Or this plane. When we cut this plane and make this body into two halves basically, the body will look some kind of a thing like this. Where if F1 is this, if F2 is this, and if this is my point Q, then there will be forces acting about this plane. Right. And what are these forces? You have dfx which will act along the x-axis, you have dfy which will act along the y-axis and you have dfz which will al act along the z-axis. <coughs> now dfx is nothing but is the result of the normal stress which is acting perpendicular to this area dAx and this normal stress is signified by sigma xx into dAx. The first subscript describes the axis to which this plane is perpendicular. This plane is perpendicular to x-axis, so this is x here. And the second subscript denotes the direction of the force, that is x direction. Then we have dfy, which is nothing but you have this shear force, shear stress acting because it is tangential to the area dAx. So essentially you have tau and x denotes the, again the axis to which this plane is perpendicular so x and y denotes the direction of this shear stress into dAx. And then you have dFz which is nothing but tau xz into dAx. And the, all this are perpendicular to x axis when we cut a plane that is perpendicular to x-axis. Now when we cut a plane perpendicular to y-axis, so these are my three stress components that I have obtained from here. Now when I cut a plane perpendicular to y-axis, I again have three stress components which are essentially sigma yy, tau yx and tau yz. y, x and z denoting the direction of the stresses and this all this y denoting the axis to which the plane is perpendicular, right? And again we have to perpendicular to z axis, you again have three stresses, they are sigma zz, tau zx and tau zy. So essentially this three, this three and this three, this three, 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 that is nine, nine stress components are required for describing the stress at the point Q. And this is pretty important to understand. Now, I'll simplify this nine stress components and try to represent it by in an, on, in an element. For example, let us suppose that the element, it's a cube type of element, right? And this nine stress components, I will represent it in this cube. For example, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and this is the z-axis. So I have this sigma xx, this is tau xy, this is tau xz. Then I have this as sigma yy, then this is equal to tau yx acting in the x direction, and this is tau yz acting in the z direction. Then you have sigma zz acting in the z direction, tau z y acting in the y direction, shear stress acting in the y direction and tau zx shear stress acting in the y x direction. So this is all for this lecture and this is how we describe the general state of stress at a point. Thanks a lot for listening. Thank you.